Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is just a little snippet of what it looks like of how we have begun to step into building God's kingdom, building God's kingdom. And you and I get to be a part of that. You and I get to be a part of that every single day. We get to step in to the living and breathing, already at work mission of Jesus Christ that started way before the foundation of the earth and that will continue long after we're gone. We get to partner with God in the here and now of what he is doing. And that is insane. (laughs) It's amazing. Our mission statement is building a community that seeks to know, love, and follow Jesus and share him with others. How can we step into that? As Grace was saying, with the God-given gifts that you have, what makes you so unique for the here and now, what can we do to step into this? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to follow all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always till the end of the age. I am with you always till the end of the age. What a beautiful promise that we have, this assurance, this blessed assurance that we have from our Father in heaven, which empowers us to step into the great commission. These are one of Jesus' last words. They are his last words as he ascended into heaven. Go and make disciples. This is the great commission, and we sometimes just don't want to do it, and it becomes the greatest omission of the church. But we're all called to do it. We're all called to go and make disciples. We're called to go and make followers, not fans, as we learned last week. And the beautiful thing is when you look at this passage, Kimberly has said it many times, and I love it because it's one of the things that I love most about this passage. The key verb in this passage isn't go. To translate that better, it's in your going, in your everyday life, in your going. The verb here is make disciples. What Jesus is telling his disciples, he's telling his followers to do as he's going back, he's like, listen, the most important thing, the most valuable thing that you can do is tell the world about me and what I have done and that I am coming back. He has asked us to make disciples because Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth and he gifts, he gives us this gift to us We are empowered to do so. Acts 1.8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in both Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, I read this passage, and I'm like, let's go. Let's go to the world. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But I understand that it can be pretty scary. How are we going to go to the ends of the earth? How am I even supposed to go across the street and talk to my neighbor? I don't even know their names. How do we step into being the witnesses of the Lord, of being heaven's ambassadors, of being kingdom walkers here on earth? It's so daunting. How do we reach everyone? How do we know who to help? How do we know which one's the right person to reach? What do we do? Where do we even start? Something that we learned on the Malawi trip was instead of being completely overwhelmed with, you know, how do we help everybody? Because when you walk into Malawi or you walk into a situation like Mexico and you see the poverty and, and you just, you literally want to help everyone. And the truth is we can't, we cannot save the world, especially not on our own. So what do we do? And and they taught us in Malawi, just focus on the one that God is putting in front of you. There will always be one that God will put right in front of you in a divine encounter at a very specific God-given moment. And the Holy Spirit will start to give you that sense in your heart. Share your story. Share my story. Ask them how their day is. Tell them, hey, 
your shirt looks really nice and start the conversation. Help the one in front of you. This is evangelism. This is sharing the good news. The world needs Jesus. We have him and we need him every single day. And it's, it's time to share him and it's time to not just be content and comfortable with the fact that we have Jesus for ourselves and tap into more of who he is for ourselves. What does he want me to learn? What does he want me to grow? What does he want me to do so that I can become more of a follower and not a fan? And in that overflow, I get to pour out onto others his love, his story, what he is doing. It is time to share it. It's all of our jobs. Paul wrote in his email this week the story of D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody was one of the most amazing evangelists and preachers of his time. And he was walking down the streets of Chicago with a sandwich board on him. And on the front, he said, I am a fool for Christ. And on the back, it said, whose fool are you? He was walking up and down the streets of Chicago. And one woman stopped him and she said, I don't like the way you're evangelizing. And he's like, oh, well, how would you do it then? How, what's your way? And flustered, she's like, oh, well, um, well, I just don't do it. And he's like, well, I will choose my way then. <laughs> I think if we're really, really honest, our response is kind of the same. Well, I just, I just don't do it. But what? is the Lord calling us to do. There are so many ways. And just as Grace shared, God has given each and every one of us a special gift, a special anointing for the here and now for you to be his witness right here and right now. In your going, in your everyday life, it's amazing that we get to go to Africa. It's amazing that we get to go to Mexico. These things are amazing. They're so beautiful, and God is totally in it. And God is totally in what he's doing through your life as we serve and love our neighbor right here. Christine's going to talk to us in just a little bit as we serve and love our neighbors, our little neighbors through VVS right here in our community. As we serve and love our neighbors through drive through dinners. As we serve and love our neighbors as you call someone and say, hey, how can I pray for you today? As we serve and love our neighbors, if you see someone who is, who's looking kind of sad and be like, hey, how's it going? It all starts with us becoming aware of more than just ourselves and realizing that there is a world that needs Jesus. So what's your way? Our way as NPPC was just talked about a little bit. We have African Enterprise, we have Y Malawi, we have Mexico, we have all these different things, drive through dinners, VBS, small groups. We have all of these ways that we are weaving together the story of Christ as we share God's love, as we build community. So what's your way? What are the gifts that God has given you? How can you step out of your comfort zone to say, I will go, here I am, send me. What is your way? And something that Tian said is so right and what Grace said too. The Lord is calling us to be more like him and as we become more like him, he's gonna show us who we are in him and that will give us that boldness and confidence and empowerment to step into what the Lord is calling us to do. He's not calling you to be someone you're not. He's calling you to be you in him for others for the sake of Christ. There are many ways. My dad's favorite way is literally taking a megaphone, going to the streets of Plainfield and saying, Jesus is alive. (laughs) That's great. That's not me. (laughs) For me, I love to ask God to kind of just show me a specific person or to make me aware of, of someone's heart or whatever. And then I'll go up and kind of engage in conversation and then pray that the Lord would give me an entry point to start sharing my story or to start sharing a God story. And, and that's my way. I love relational encounters where I get to talk. I like to talk. 
where I get to hear where they are, where then I get to share what God has done in me, and that's that entry point. That's my way. What's your way? Do you love to cook? And maybe you can cook for someone and say, hey, God just put you on my mind. Here's a meal. I, I would love to share this with you. What is your gift? Sending letters. No one sends letters anymore, man. I love sending letters. <laughs> Send a letter. Be bold to share the love of Jesus because it makes a difference. It makes all the difference to share your story. When we were in Malawi, um, someone had told me a story of a woman who was sold, she was, she was in, a, in a marriage, she was sold into a marriage, and after the husband got super done with her, he was tired of her, he sold her into prostitution. And this woman was super young, and she was so tired of her life. She was done. She went and she tried to drown herself in the Malawi River. And as she was in the river, she felt someone grab her out of the waters, and she was brought to the hospital. And in the hospital, there was a nurse who took care of her, and the nurse was a follower of Jesus. And she started to pray for her, and she cared for her. And after the woman was well, the nurse invited her to church. And the woman said, okay, I'll go. So as the woman steps into the church, she freezes because she sees this picture on the wall. And she asked the nurse who was there with her, who is that? And the nurse is like, that's, that's a picture of Jesus. And she's like, that's the man who drew me from the waters. That's the man who rescued me. This is our Jesus church. He is alive, and he is moving, and he is stirring, and he is rescuing people from waters, and he is rescuing our very souls. The moment that we give our lives to Jesus, that is a rescue. And the moment that you get to share the love of Jesus with others, you are partnering with God in a rescue mission that has an impact on all of eternity. So what is your way? And what is our part? What is it? And let's not be quick to miss out. As I was in Mexico, I was jumping from one team to another to help with the translations on the last day. And there was a little girl that I got very, very, very attached to. Her name is Vanessa. And she knew that it was the last day. So she's got like kind of extra clingy because she, she didn't want to see us go. And um, I was like, OK, honey, it's, it's time to go. I love you. I'll see you later, knowing very well that I wasn't going to see her. Um, and I start running up the hill, um, and I just hear her say, hey, hey, hey. And all within me didn't want to turn around, one, because I knew that I would totally cry. And then also, I, I had somewhere to go. I had somewhere to be. And it was a God mission. Like, I wasn't just going to dilly-dally. Like, I was going to translate the dedication for another team. Like, I was doing a God-given assignment. I had no time to turn around and look back. And I felt very conflicted in that moment, and I felt the Holy Spirit just stop me in my tracks, and I turn around, and there's little tiny Vanessa at the bottom of the hill, and all she goes is, and I would have missed that. I would have missed that if I was too busy in what I needed to do to get to where I needed to be. I would have missed that moment. How many moments are we missing because we're so caught up in our lives, because we're so caught up in doing what God is calling us to do, because we're going to tapestry, because we're going to church, because we're going to go buy a dinner for somebody, that we don't stop to see what God is doing right there. What are we missing? And how do we stop missing it? It's our time, church, to rise, to step out of fear, to step into courage, and to step into what God is calling you to do. And it's going to look different for each and every one of us, but when we come together, oh, it's going to be so beautiful. Kingdom come, and may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for this moment. We thank you so much for these encouraging stories. Thank you so much for opening our eyes to what you're doing around the world. And in this week, God, reveal to us what is our part? What is our way of sharing your story, of sharing the good news? 
show us and make us fearless for you. In our going, help us to be obedient and to not miss the moments in which you are speaking. In your name we pray, amen.